GMAT Tuesdays! Hello again, it's Tuesday and we got GMAT stuff, GMAT stuff to deal with, excuse me. Um, so today in this video we're going to look at multipliers, um, specifically how to make them and why they're useful and sort of what questions they would be useful in. This came from a student who wanted to know a little bit more about percents and specifically what is a multiplier and how do I use it. So. Big concept here is first, how to make a multiplier. I want you to leave this video with a very clear understanding of how to make a multiplier. It's a three step, one, two, three step process that's very easy and straightforward. First, you're gonna have a percent and you want to change it to a decimal. That's pretty easy. Next, you have two options in step two. If it's percent increase, then you're gonna make your decimal positive. If it's a percent decrease, then you're gonna make your decimal negative. Third step, add one. That's it, that's all you have to do to make a multiplier. Um, so, this is the process. Let's put it to work with an actual problem from the official guide. This is a problem solving question, um, and it's in the 13th, 13th edition, it's probably in the 12th edition due, but I was using the 13th. And it was question number 71. I didn't write out the whole question because it's very long. So um, abbreviated a little bit here. Let me get the right pin. Okay, so in this question, we have 2,420 stocks. That's what we're told. And we're told that all of the stocks close at a different price today than yesterday. So all of the stocks close at a different price. Then we're told the useful information that we use to solve this problem. The number of stocks that closed higher today is 20% greater than the number that closed at a lower price. Now that's kind of like a lot to weed through and understand, but take your time with it. They're telling us about the stocks that closed today, and they're saying the ones that closed today closed Higher, the number that closed higher was 20% greater. So there's 20 more stocks that closed at a higher price than the ones that closed at a lower price. So the question is, how many stocks closed at a higher price? So we're going to need to use a multiplier in this question. It'll make it a lot easier to deal with. Um, the first thing I did was I set uh, the lower price, the stocks that closed at a lower price, to X. And then we're going to use a multiplier for our higher price because we have a 20 cent or 20 percent greater in the problem. And so this is one big takeaway is that multipliers are great and useful when you're dealing with percent increase or percent decrease. So what do we do? We change our percent to a decimal. So we have 20 percent greater. That means we go, where can I write this? I'm going to write it down here, take a knee. Um, 20%, how do we change that into a decimal? We're going to move our decimal point and drop the percent sign. So boom, boom, so this becomes 0 0.20. Okay, we got a decimal. Now, step two, is it a percent increase or percent decrease? Well, it says greater. Greater is a synonymous with increase. So we're going to keep it positive, so we can leave it here, plus 0 0.20. And then finally we add 1. So 1 plus 0.2 equals 1.2. That is our multiplier. So what we're working with here is the lower price is x. The higher price is 20% more than x. So all we have to do is put 1.2 in front of our x and that's our multiplier because x is a hundred percent of the lower price and we know the higher price is 20 percent more than that so the multiplier is representing that for us and it makes it a lot easier to solve this problem instead of having to deal with percents and you're putting a number over a hundred and then you have fractions um, so let's see how much how much easier it makes this problem so we know the total amount of stocks is 2420 so we take the lower price stocks, or the stocks that closed at a lower price, excuse me, and we take the stocks that closed at a higher price, we add them together, we know they're going to total 
420. So that's what we do here, except now we have our multiplier. So x plus 1.2x. And then if we want to solve this, we know, well, x plus 1.2x, this x is like a 1. And so we get 2.2x equals 2,420. Now we can divide by 2.2 and bring that over here. And we're solving for x, so x equals 2,420 divided by 2.2. Any quick mathematicians out there? Ding, 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 1,100. Excellent. But what did we just find? Is that the answer? Are you going to go choose C right now? Don't do that. This is a big mistake that people make as they get towards the end of solving something and think, whoo I'm done. This is great. I'm going to move on to the next question. And they go and circle the answer or what they think the answer is. So many mistakes in math problems are made at the final stage where you rush towards the finish line, you drop your guard, you forget. What were you solving for? X is the lower price. That's what we just discovered. We need to know the higher price, which is 1.2x. So we have one more step to do. And the GMAT loves to do this kind of stuff. Put one extra step at the end um, and see if you're actually paying attention. So we go 1.2 times 1,100, and that's going to equal 1,320. So our answer here is actually going to be D. All right, so multipliers, extremely useful when dealing with percent change. So percent increase and percent decrease. Remember, the steps are very simple and easy. Do a little practice. Um, it won't be that hard. And if you have any questions or comments, if you have a request for a type of video that you'd like to see, put them in the comments down below. They're all, all the comments are down here. And I'll be here next Tuesday with another video to help you out on the GMAT. I hope you guys have an excellent day, and I will see you next week.